Hello and a very warm welcome to this online service for the ninth Sunday after Trinity. It's not been an entirely easy week, has it? We are still in the middle of the most awful pandemic. Beirut has experienced the most devastating explosion. And our own dear Bishop Peter has been diagnosed with leukaemia. These are all things we keep in our prayers. And please do look in the Benefis News in future weeks for any updates on Bishop Peter. Over the last few weeks, our readings have shown us how Jesus has tried to teach about his lordship over all of the natural created order and us. Today, our readings about Jesus walking on the water and Peter also trying to do the same. Jesus wants his disciples to accept him as Lord and to trust him. Kate will reflect on this passage and give us things to think about. Bishop Peter has told us that he is trusting his life and his family and all of us to God's loving care. So with all these thoughts in our mind, we come to worship. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And together let us pray. Heavenly Father, in our time together now, help us to celebrate your love, learn from your truth, trust in your grace and grow strong in your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first song, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me, has words which remind us of so many reasons why we can trust in Jesus. His grace, his righteousness, his love, power and peace, which uphold us through whatever storms life may throw at us. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. <laughs> gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. It is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Saviour he will stay. I labour on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me Through the deepest valley he will lead Oh, the night has been won and I shall overcome Yet not I, but through Christ in me
fate I dread I know I am forgiven The future sure The price it has been paid For Jesus bled And suffered for my pardon And he was raised To overthrow the grave To this I hold My sin has been defeated Jesus now and ever is my plea Oh, the chains are released I can sing, I am free Yet not I, but through Christ in me breath I long to follow Jesus for he has said that he will bring me home and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne to this I only Jesus all the glory evermore to him when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ in me when the race is complete Still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. The first disciples had times of belief and then doubt, of saying the right thing and then the wrong thing, of doing good and then not so good. The same is true of us. But in Jesus we learn that forgiveness is about mercy and grace and not blame. And so we now come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Let us pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We now hear our Gospel reading for today coming from the Gospel of Matthew, read by Rosie. Kate will then give us her reflection, which will be followed by music from Frida and Cathy. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14 
verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. We are looking this morning at the whole area of trust. How much trust do you put in someone like, for example, an airline pilot, a surgeon, a financial advisor? The word trust has a number of definitions. Firm belief in reliability or truth or strength, etc. And confident expectation. Peter is initially putting all his trust in Jesus as he steps out of the boat and takes a few tentative steps towards him. Imagine stepping out, seeing if your foot would stay on top of the water or sink, bringing the other foot out of the boat, letting go of the side of the boat, looking up to see Jesus just ahead, taking the first step. Yes, it works. Thoughts racing through your mind. I can do it. Yes, I can do it. But then Peter is suddenly aware of the wind, whistling around his shoulders and face, tugging at his clothing. He feels the spray. He glances to the side and sees a huge wave racing towards him, and then he starts to sink. He cries out and looks to Jesus in panic. Jesus immediately reaches out to catch him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? At first... Peter is spurred on by Jesus' call to him. Come, he says. Peter knows that Jesus is reliable and strong. He has confidence in him and expects to walk to him on the water. He trusts him totally. But Peter, just like us, is human and his human side takes over. Reason takes over. You can't walk on water, you will sink. The thoughts flit into his mind the instant he takes his eyes off Jesus and notices the wind and the waves. So like us. We want to do great things for God. We feel called. We believe in him. We know he is reliable and strong, but somehow we lack the courage to take the first step. This challenge to step out of the boat is for us all. Because Jesus says to us all, come, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will refresh you. But first we must take the step of faith and come, keeping our eyes always and constantly on him. We are called to take the message of Jesus' love and forgiveness out, out from the safety of our boat, the church, out into the turbulent waters of our world. Paul points out to the Roman church that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter, in his panic and distress, called out to Jesus and was saved. But how can people call out to Jesus and be saved if they don't know about him? And how can they know about him unless they've heard? 
and how can they hear unless someone has been sent to tell them? As it says in that letter to the Romans, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Are our feet beautiful? Are we ready to step out of the boat and into the water to bring good news to others? With all the challenges we face ahead, as a church, as Christians, as members of this community, the country and indeed the world, we can put our trust totally in Jesus. Once the other disciples in the boat had seen Jesus walking on the water with Peter, they exclaimed that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. Their faith had been hugely strengthened by what they had witnessed. When we go out in faith, like Peter, those around us will also find their faith hugely strengthened. This applies to all the challenges we face in our daily lives. How we handle them can speak to others around us. Do we hold firm when the waves threaten to overcome us? We become disciples of Jesus not only by praying, studying, worshipping and fellowship, but also and crucially by being prepared to step out of the boat and walk on the water, to witness to our faith and trust in Jesus by our actions as well as our words. There are literally hundreds of people around us who do not know anything of the Christian faith. There are many whose lives are swept up by the worries, concerns and challenges of the world in which we live, who have lost their way, who put their faith in materialism, money, power and so on. Christians also live in the world and cannot avoid the pressures and challenges. But if we turn to Christ, if we do all we can to keep our eyes on him and follow his teaching and put our trust in him, then we shall not be drowned by those pressures. We know to whom we can reach out for help. We simply need to share what we have with others, just like the loaves and fishes from last week, so that some at least can hear the message, respond and be saved. Amen.
let us together share in the words of the Creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And although we are not together, we can still all share in Christ's peace by joining together with these words. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Come now to our time of prayer, today led by Jeanette. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that when we are buffeted by the waves of life, Jesus is always near to hold out his hand to save us. When we are troubled and feel insecure, may we take courage and put our trust in you. We pray especially today for Bishop Peter, who is unwell and expects to spend some time in hospital receiving treatment. We pray that he may have peace of mind and the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Bless his wife and family, that they may experience your reassurance and comfort at this time. Be with Bishop Ruth and those responsible for organising the work of the diocese. Give them guidance as they plan for the future. Our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Lebanon, recovering from the recent tragic explosion. We pray for medical and practical help for the many wounded, homeless and traumatised people in Beirut. May there be a speedy response from many countries to give support in this crisis. Bless our rector and the ministry team as they make tentative plans for the future, having to be ready to adapt to changing situations. As some churches are opening for services, we pray that those attending will feel safe and able to adapt to new ways of worship. We pray that the online services may continue to be a blessing to those who are shielding or don't feel confident yet to attend church. Thank you for all those giving support and keeping in contact with isolated people. We pray for wise and confident leadership in the country. May the decisions made be clear and fair. Father, give to us and all your people in times of anxiety, serenity, in times of hardship, courage, in times of uncertainty, patience, and at all times a quiet trust in your wisdom and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The special prayer for today, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And we join all our thoughts and prayers together in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our last song, written over 200 years ago, celebrates the wonderful truth that Jesus will never desert those who put their trust in him. How firm a foundation. What more can he say to you than he has said? You who to Jesus for refuge have fled. Fear not, he is with you. Oh, be not dismayed, for he is your God and will still give strengthen and help you and cause you to stand upheld by his righteous omnipotent hand in every condition in sickness in health in poverty's veil As our worship draws to its close, let us hear the closing words of the Epistle of Jude. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and for evermore. Amen. And we say together, may the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself, the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us for his service, and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>